Christianity, one of the largest and most widely known religions in the world. With stories and scripture dating back thousands of years, there is bound to be some interesting stories in all of the thousands of years of its existence, and some dark and creepy or interesting secrets that many don't know about. And yeah, that's what this video is going to be on today, the Christianity Iceberg. Now, if you don't know how an iceberg chart works, well, it starts with well-known things such as Jesus or the Holy Trinity, and towards the bottom, having some more creepy and obscure entries such as lost books of the Bible or the devil. Alright, I'm excited to get into it, so let's get into it with the Christianity Iceberg Explained. And actually, before we get into the video, I'd like to say thank you all so much for 100,000 subscribers. It's just mind-blowing how fast we have grown, and it's really amazing that we've reached this huge goal. It really is a dream come true, and I've dreamed of it since I was a kid, and now it's a reality. And I'm not sure if I want to make a 100,000 subscribers special because I don't even know if people want to see anything like that. But let me know if you want to see a 100k special or a Q&A or a stream or something like that. And just comment your ideas down below or if you'd even like to see that. And yeah, thank you all once again. And also, by the way, next subscriber goal is 250,000 subscribers. So if you're watching, make sure you subscribe. This community is awesome. Tier 1. Jesus Jesus, a central figure in Christianity, is believed to be the Son of God and the Messiah. Born in Bethlehem, his life and teachings, recorded in the Gospels in the Bible, emphasize love, compassion, and forgiveness for all people. Christians revere his crucifixion and resurrection as an atonement for humanity's sins, offering the promise for eternal life. Jesus' impact extends globally, shaping religious, cultural, and ethical perspectives, and definitely one of the most important figures in all of Christianity. Keeping up with what's happening globally is like going through the layers of an iceberg. There's always more beneath the surface that isn't directly told to you. It's tough to rely on just one source. That's why I need to get you guys informed on the amazing sponsor for this video, Ground News. Ground News is a website and app created to give readers a transparent way to read the news. With access to over 50,000 news sources across the political spectrum that allows you to compare headlines. See who owns the source and where the bias leans per article, giving you the complete overview of every story. When I first got access to Ground News, I decided to look at icebergs, since that's what my entire channel is based around, and I found a pretty interesting article, such as, Antarctic scientists examine world's largest iceberg, three times the size of New York City. And on Ground News, I can see this story has been covered by more than 46 sources. If I scroll down, I can see every article about this topic and compare all the headlines. One of my favorite features of Ground News is the blind spot feed, which highlights stories that are disproportionately covered by one side of the political spectrum. This feature is fully unlocked with the Vantage plan. Since I've started using Ground News, it has made the news significantly less stressful to read by weeding out sensationalized clickbait to get to the core of every issue. I think what they're doing is really important because it really shows what is going on in the world without being biased to one side. Go to ground.news slash snook to check it out. Subscribe through my link to get 30% off the Vantage subscription for unlimited access to all the best features such as the blind spot feed, which is about $5 a month or get the pro plan for only $1 a month. Trust me, this is better than any other news source out there. Uh, just. It's amazing. When you subscribe, you not only support me, you're also supporting an independent platform trying to make the news more transparent. And anyways, let's get back into the video. New Testament the New Testament, a central text in Christianity, comprises 27 different books, including the Gospels, the Acts, Epistles, and Revelation. It focuses on the life, the teachings, and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, serving as the foundation for Christian faith. The Gospels, which are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, narrate Jesus' life in all different perspectives. 
While the epistles provide guidance to early Christian communities and people, while the Acts book details the early church's history and showing how it formed, and Revelation explores apocalyptic themes and how the end of the world will come. Together, these books convey the message of salvation and the establishment of the Christian faith and everything after Jesus' birth. God the Father God the Father is the divine being who is the Father of Jesus Christ and the creator of the universe. He is the supreme being and the source of all life in the universe and where all life originated from from the start of time. He is the perfect model of fatherhood and provides guidance and support to all who believe in him. The Nativity the Nativity, also just known as Christmas, is a celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. It is observed on December 25th and marks the beginning of the Christmas season. This holiday holds great significance for Christians around the world. It is a time meant for rejoicing, love, and sharing. And the Nativity story, recounted in the Gospels, tells of how Jesus was born in Bethlehem to the Virgin Mary and Joseph. And we'll talk about Virgin Mary and Mary and Joseph later down in the iceberg. Elohim. Elohim is a Hebrew word that means God or deity. It is a gender neutral term that refers to God's nature and attributes and isn't just showing that God is male or female, but just, you know, gender neutral. In the Hebrew Bible, Elohim is often used in conjunction with other names and titles for God, such as El Shaddai and YHWH. It is a sacred word that holds significant religious and spiritual meaning for Jews and Christians. Mary. Mary, a prominent figure in the Bible, is revered as the Virgin Mary and the mother of Jesus Christ. Her story unfolds in the New Testament, particularly in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. Mary's role in the Nativity and the life of Jesus holds great significance in Christian traditions. Her humility, her faith, and the acceptance of the divine plan are all highlighted in biblical narratives, making her a very, very important figure in Christian faith and also one of the most holy people to ever live. The Old Testament Sacred in Judaism and Christianity, it encompasses foundational texts like Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, forming the Torah. This collection includes historical narratives, poetry, prophecy, and wisdom literature. Stories of key figures such as Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and David are central and shows how the earth was created in the book of Genesis, starting with Adam and Eve, and I think we'll get into Adam and Eve and the forming of the earth later down in the iceberg, just by the way. It also serves as an important part for religious beliefs, providing moral teachings, laws, and theological insights crucial to understanding the origins and the principles of both Judaism and Christianity. Mary Magdalene Mary Magdalene, a significant figure in the New Testament, is portrayed as a main follower of Jesus Christ. Her story is primarily found in the Gospels, where she is mentioned as being present during crucial events like the crucifixion and the resurrection. Mary Magdalene is often associated with repentance and forgiveness. While the Gospels don't explicitly identify her as a former prostitute, historical and literary traditions have sometimes linked her to such interpretations, so she remains a pretty big symbol for people and shows that they can turn their life completely around and turn towards a better way of life. The Twelve Apostles The Twelve Apostles, central figures and some of the most important figures in all of Christianity and the Bible, were chosen by Jesus to be his closest disciples and witnesses to his teachings. Named in the Gospels, including Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, Tacitus, Simon, and Judas, who was later replaced by Matthias. They played a key role in spreading Jesus' message and establishing the early Christian church. Each of the apostles had distinct characteristics and contributions, contributing to the foundation of Christian doctrine and tradition. 
John the Baptist. John the Baptist, a large and important figure in Christianity, is recognized as a prophet and precursor to Jesus Christ. Mentioned in the Gospels, particularly in the relation to Jesus' ministry, and John is known for baptizing Jesus in the Jordan River, so he played a really big role in starting off that tradition for Christianity. He preached repentance and prepared the way for the Messiah. His life and his teachings emphasize spiritual renewal and the arrival of a new era. John's significance extends beyond just Christianity, with his role acknowledged in various religious traditions and other historical contexts, not just the Bible. The Seven Days of Creation In the biblical narrative of Genesis, the seven days of creation describe the formation of the world. On the first day, God created light, followed by the separation of the sky and waters on the second day. On the third day, land and vegetation emerged while the fourth day saw the creation of the sun, moon, and stars. Birds and sea creatures were formed on the fifth day, land animals on the sixth day, and finally, humans were created in God's image on the seventh day, concluding the divine act of creation. Angels Angels, celestial beings found in various different religious traditions, are often considered messengers of the divine such as in Christianity, they serve God and act as messengers between the heavenly realm and humanity, described as malevolent and powerful. Angels are present in the Bible, while archangels like Michael and Gabriel having specific roles. Other traditions such as in Islam and Judaism also feature angels, just showing that different religions around the world also have angels associated with them. J-H-V-H, -H, often pronounced as Yahweh, is a sacred name for God in the Hebrew Bible, or the Old Testament. It represents the divine, ineffable name of the God of Israel. Revealed to Moses at the burning bush, it signifies the eternal and self-existing nature of God. Due to its sacredness, ancient Hebrew speakers avoided pronouncing it directly. Yahweh is central to monotheistic beliefs, particularly in Judaism and Christianity, and understanding its significance contributes to the comprehension of theological concepts in Abrahamic religions. The Trinity The Trinity is a fundamental Christian doctrine expressing the true and nature of God. It states that God exists as three persons in one essence, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Each person is distinct, yet fully God, sharing divine attributes and eternal existence. So Jesus is God and the Holy Spirit is God, but they're not God themselves. They're all parts of God. It's really confusing and it's just hard, really hard to explain. The Trinity is a complex mystery central to Christian theology, emphasizing unity and diversity. This concept underlies the Christian understanding of God's nature and roles within the context of salvation and divine revelation. Judas's Destiny Judas, a disciple of Jesus, infamously betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, leading to Jesus' crucifixion. Overwhelmed by guilt, Judas later returned the money and hung himself. The Bible, specifically in the books of Acts, suggests that Judas' death resulted in an empty place among the apostles, and the term field of blood is associated with his fate. Different Christian traditions hold diverse views on Judas' destiny, ranging from eternal condemnation to interpretations emphasizing God's sovereignty and mercy, leading him to heaven even though he betrayed Jesus. Tier 2 First Enoch. The first book of Enoch, also known as One Enoch or the First Enoch, is an ancient Jewish apocalyptic text ascribed to Enoch, a biblical figure. It comprises several different sections, including the Book of Watchers, which narrates the fall of angels and the coming judgment, considered non-canonically by most branches of Judaism and Christianity, and the First Enoch is valued for its insights into ancient Jewish thought, cosmology, and eschatology. It has influenced various different religious and mystical traditions, providing different unique perspectives on heavenly realms and other sort of offshoots of the main story. The Flood 
the flood narrative found in various ancient cultures, including the Bible's book of Genesis, recounts a global deluge sent by God to cleanse the world. In Genesis, Noah is instructed to build an ark, saving his family and pairs of animals. After 40 days and 40 nights of rain, the waters subside, signifying God's covenant. The flood is a prominent theme symbolizing divine judgment, purification, and renewal, with parallels in Mesopotamian and other mythologies worldwide. So this is a trend found in many different religions, all having something to do with a great flood. Leviathan In the Bible, the Leviathan is a sea monster mentioned in various poetic and prophetic texts, notably Job 41 and Isaiah 27 chapter and verse 1. Described as a powerful and untainable creature, the Leviathan symbolizes chaos and the forces of evil. Interpretations do vary though, with some seen it as a literal sea monster and others viewing it as a metaphor for cosmic disorder. The Leviathan's mentioned underscores divine power and control over chaotic elements, emphasizing God's supremacy and his strength. Cherubs. Cherubs, often depicted as angelic babies with wings and childlike features, which are the most widely known kind of angel thing that most people see and think of when someone says angel. And these are found in the Bible. In the Bible, cherubs are associated with guarding sacred spaces, symbolizing divine presence and protection. The Ark of the Covenant and Solomon's Temple feature cherubic imagery. Cherubs are considered part of the angelic hierarchy, embodying innocence and devotion. Their representation extends beyond just Christianity, appearing in diverse other cultural and artistic contexts, not just the Bible. Satan is the prince of this world. The concept that Satan is the prince of this world is rooted in biblical and theological perspectives, particularly in the New Testament. In passages like John chapter 12 verse 31 and 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, Satan is described as having mass influence and authority over this earthly realm and the earth we live on. This designation emphasizes the idea of spiritual opposition and the presence of evil in the world. Different Christian traditions interpret these passages to varying degrees, shaping beliefs about the nature of spiritual warfare and the struggle between good and evil. The Trinity in the Old Testament while the explicit concept of the Trinity is not clearly shown in the Old Testament, hints and foreshadowing are discerned. Passages like Genesis chapter 18, where three visitors appear to Abraham, and the use of plural pronouns in Genesis verse 26 chapter 1, suggest a complex unit and not just one God. Theopanes and angelic appearances also hint at divine plurality. Christian theologians retroactively interpret these elements as prefigurations of the Trinitarian understanding later explicitly articulated in the New Testament, highlighting continuity between the two and the Trinity wasn't something that just showed up in the New Testament. Adam naming the animals in Genesis chapter 2 verses 19 and 20 of the Old Testament Adam is described naming all the animals showcasing his God-given authority over all of creation God presented the animals to Adam and as he named them he exercised a role in defining their nature this act symbolizes human stewardship and dominion over the natural world, emphasizing the special relationship between humans and the rest of creation, such as animals. The Transfiguration The Transfiguration, a significant event in the New Testament, portrays Jesus on a mountain revealing his divine glory. In the presence of Peter, James, and John, Jesus' appearance transforms, shining brightly. Moses and Elijah also appear, symbolizing the Law and the Prophets. God's voice declares Jesus as his Son. This event affirms Jesus' divinity prefigures his glorification, and underscores this very important part, showing that he fulfilled the prophet. The Nephilim 
The Nephilim, mentioned in Genesis chapter 6, are mysterious beings described as the offspring of sons of God and daughters of men. Interpretations may vary, with some viewing them as fallen angels or divine beings, while others see them as a powerful and possibly tyrannical human. Their existence is linked to a period of wickedness, leading to God's decision to bring the flood, and the flood ended up wiping them all out. The Nephilim remain enigmatic figures, sparking debates and interpretations within biblical scholarship and religious traditions, whether to take this metaphorically or literally. God's Throne God's throne, a symbol of divine sovereignty, is often depicted in different religious texts, including the Bible, described as majestic and surrounded by heavenly beings. It signifies God's authority and rule over all the universe. In visions like Isaiah 6 and Revelations 4, the throne is portrayed in celestial splendor. The imagery underscores reverence for the Almighty and the heavenly realm. The concept of God's throne is central to all theological understanding, emphasizing his and God's transcendence and eternal reign and a kind of an easy way to understand how he has power everything when he has his throne. Behemoth Behemoth is a mysterious creature mentioned in the book of Job, specifically Job chapter 40 verses 15 through 24 in the Bible. Described as a powerful and massive creature, it symbolizes divine creative power. The passage presents Behemoth alongside another enigmatic being, which is the Leviathan which we talked about earlier, as examples of God's sovereign control over creation. Interpretations do vary, with some seeing the Behemoth as a literal creature and others understanding it as a metaphorical representation of cosmic forces. And this is something that can be seen a lot in the Bible and people argue about a lot, is if things are supposed to be made literal or figurative and metaphorically. So there's a lot of just kind of arguments that go around things such as this. Tier 3. Mammon. Mammon, referenced in the Bible, represents the pursuit of wealth and material possessions as a false idol. It warns against prioritizing worldly treasures over spiritual values. Mammon symbolizes the potential corruption associated with excessive focus on wealth. So this one is just really simple in understanding. It's just, you know, focus more on spirituality and yourself other than worldly possessions because you're not going to live forever. Divine Snakes Divine snakes hold various symbolic meanings in religious and cultural contexts. In Christianity, the serpent is often associated with temptation and sin in the Garden of Eden. In some other cultures, though, snakes symbolize transformation, healing, and renewal, so it's kind of unique to see that in Christianity, it's representative of something super evil, but in some other cultures, it's actually meant to show healing and renewal, which is interesting now. Two different cultures or multiple different cultures represent it very differently. Acts of Peter The Acts of Peter is a text recounting stories of the Apostle Peter's miraculous deeds and teachings while he was living. It includes Peter's confrontation with the sorcerer Simon Magus, his miraculous escapes from prison, and his eventual martyrdom by crucifixion. Although not included in the canonical New Testament, the Acts of Peter provides insights into early Christian beliefs and practices, blending actual historical events with other legendary elements surrounding the life of one of Jesus' closest disciples. The Watchers the Watchers, mentioned in the Book of Anak, are fallen angels who descended to Earth and engaged in forbidden relationships with human women. This transgression led to the birth of hybrid beings known as Nephilim, resulting in divine judgments. The concept of the Watchers reflects themes of different cosmic rebellion and the consequences of divine disobedience. And Though not part of any canonical Bible, the Book of Anak and its depiction of the Watchers provide insights into different ancient Jewish and early Christian apocalyptic literature. The Son of Man The Son of Man, a title used by Jesus in the Gospels, is associated with divine authority and judgment. 
In biblical imagery found in Daniel and Revelations, the Son of Man appears in fire, symbolizing divine purification and judgment. This powerful and transformative depiction underscores the role of the Son of Man in the final judgment, separating the righteous from the wicked. The fiery imagery signifies divine glory and the purifying nature of the Son of Man's ultimate authority in biblical prophecy. The Beloved Apostle the beloved apostle, traditionally identified as John, holds a special place in most Christian traditions. Known for his close relationship with Jesus, depicted reclining on Jesus' chest during the Last Supper, he authored the Gospel of John, Epistles of John, and Revelation, so really big books and important books in the Bible. His writings emphasize love, theological insights, and apocalyptic visions. The title Beloved reflects the deep bond with Jesus. The Beloved Apostle is revered for his profound spiritual insights and significant contributions to the New Testament canon. Acts of John the Acts of John is a work attributed to John the Apostle, detailing his journeys, miracles, and teachings. It includes different stories of John's encounters with various different individuals, including a dead youth raised to life, and John's self-imposed exile on the island of Patmos. The text exhibits a mix of historical evidence and events and legendary different elements. While not included in the actual New Testament, the Acts of John provides insights into early Christian traditions, spirituality, and the veneration of John as a significant figure in Christian history. Naked Boy Fleeing Gethsemane The Naked Boy Fleeing Gethsemane is a mysterious and enigmatic figure briefly mentioned in the Gospel of Mark. And this was really briefly because it only had one verse in the book of Mark, chapter 14, verses 51 through 52. During Jesus' arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane, a young man wearing only a linen cloth attempted to follow Jesus, but fled when seized by the authorities. The identity and the significance of this unnamed youth remains unclear leading to various different interpretations and speculations on who this boy is. Some view it as a symbol, while others may suggest it might represent an eyewitness account or a literary device conveying the urgency of the moment, but no one really knows what this mysterious boy was doing at Jesus' arrest. Sam Yaza Sam Yaza, a prominent figure in the Book of Anak, is identified as the leader of the Watchers, which we talked about earlier, which are fallen angels who descended to Earth and transgressed by engaging with human women. Sam Yaza plays a certain role and a central role in this text, leading the angels into rebellion. The narrative describes the consequences of their actions, including the Book of Nephilim and Divine Judgment. Sam Yaza represents the archetype of an angelic being who succumbs to pride and disobedience, leading to cosmic consequences. The Witch of Endor The Witch of Endor is a biblical figure mentioned in the first book of Samuel. King Saul, desperate for guidance before battle, consults her, violating the prohibition against deviation. The witch summons the spirit of the descended prophet Samuel, who predicts Saul's downfall. This story raises theological questions about the afterlife and the ethical implications of seeking supernatural guidance, and that that's even a thing, how you can get supernatural guidance, which wasn't really seen before. The Witch of Endor remains a complex and debated character in the Bible, offering different insights into ancient views on necromancy and the supernatural. Unknown Miracles Unknown miracles refer to the extraordinary events or interventions that lack clear attribution or recognition in the Bible. These unattributed wonders challenge conventional understanding of the world and the Bible even, sparking curiosity and contemplation. In religious and mystical traditions, stories of unknown miracles often circulate, prompting believers to reflect on divine mysteries and the limits of human comprehension and what is possible. These accounts, though mysterious, may inspire faith, wonder, and a sense of the transcendent in the Bible, encouraging individuals to contemplate the extraordinary aspects of existence beyond the boundaries of conventional knowledge and the conventional world, and what can actually happen with the divine spirit of Jesus or God. 
Second Anak. The second book of Anak, also known as Tu Anak or Slavonic Anak, is a text attributed to the biblical figure Anak. This work explores themes of celestial realms, angelic hierarchies, and visions, so this book doesn't really do anything on earth. It delves into Anak's journey into the heavens, encounters with angelic beings, and insights into cosmology. Although not part of the canonical scriptures, Second Anak offers a unique perspective on a mystical and historic traditions contributing to a broader understanding of ancient Jewish and Christian apocalyptic literature. Tier 4, Cain's Death The Bible doesn't explicitly detail Cain's death, and if you don't know who Cain and Abel is, well, Cain killed his brother Abel because he was jealous that he was getting more attention from God. But Cain faced divine punishment, but was marked by God for protection, so he couldn't get killed and have the niceness of dying, I guess, something like that. Some texts, like the Book of Jubilees, offer alternative accounts, suggesting Cain actually died in a hunting incident. These narratives contribute to diverse traditions and interpretations surrounding Cain's fate, and although some say that Cain actually was marked by God so he couldn't die, and he was forced to walk the earth forever. So, technically, Cain could still be on the world today. All the way from the start of the world, Cain could still be somewhere around the world because he isn't blessed with the able to die. Papias's account of Judas's death. Judas, who died like we talked about earlier from hanging, but Papias, who was an early Christian writer, offers a different account of Judas's death, suggesting a different and more vivid narrative. According to Papias, Judas suffered a gruesome fate after swelling to an immense size and experiencing a fatal discharge of bodily fluids. This account really contrasts with the other biblical narratives and reflects diverse early Christian traditions surrounding Judas' demise. St. John Helping Mary The Gospel of John narrates a poignant scene where, during Jesus' crucifixion, he entrusts the care of his own mother Mary to the beloved disciple traditionally identified as John. In this act, Jesus expresses his concern for Mary's welfare and symbolizes the broader community of believers. The moment underscores themes of things such as love, compassion, and communal responsibility. This gesture has inspired devotion and contemplation within Christian traditions, emphasizing the profound connections and responsibilities within the spiritual family. The Dead Resurrected Along with Christ Matthew's Gospels record that at the moment of Jesus' death on the cross, there were earthquakes and tombs opened, and many saints who had died were actually resurrected. They appeared to people in Jerusalem after Jesus' resurrection. While the biblical account is concise, it signifies the profound impact of Christ's death and his resurrection, symbolizing victory over death and offering a glimpse of the transformative power of the crucifixion in the lives of who believed, such as the saints that were resurrected. Simon Magus, mentioned in the Acts of the Apostles, was a Samaritan magician who practiced sorcery. He astounded people with his magical feats, claiming to be someone great. When he witnesses the Apostles' miracles, he sought to purchase the ability to impart the Holy Spirit. Although he was confronted by Peter, Simon's intentions were rebuked. His story reflects early encounters between magic and Christianity highlighting the challenges faced by emerging Christian communities in the context of competing beliefs. Different Angel Types Angelic hierarchies in various different religions, traditions feature different types of angels, such as in Christian angelology. Classifications include seraphim, cherubim, thrones, dominions, virtues, powers, principalities, archangels, and regular angels. Each type is believed to have different specific roles and attributes in serving God and interacting with humanity. Saint Paul in the Third Heaven In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2-4, through Saint Paul recounts an extraordinary experience of being caught up to the Third Heaven. 
where he heard inexpressible words, whether in the body or out, he couldn't definitively say. This visionary encounter underscores Paul's profound spiritual revelations and mystical experiences. The concept of three heavens may symbolize different celestial realms that we don't know about and wasn't really mentioned in the Bible, which is kind of interesting and weird. And Paul's unique encounter serves as a powerful testament to the depth of his spiritual journey and connection with divine mysteries. The Gospel of Nicodemus the Gospel of Nicodemus, a text likely from the 4th century, expands on the events surrounding Jesus' crucifixion, trial, and descent into Hades. Also known as the Acts of Pilate, it includes the trial before Pilate, conversations with Nicodemus, and Christ's descent into the underworld. So, a really interesting, kind of weird, lost gospel. Although not part of the canonical gospels, it offers additional details and different perspectives on the Passion narrative contributing to early Christian traditions and theological revelations and reflections on the redemptive significance of Christ's actions. And all right, that wraps up the video and the Christianity iceberg explained. I thought this was a really interesting iceberg and I'm glad I covered it. And uh, make sure you check out Ground News. I genuinely like their stuff. I think visibility and transparency in all news networks really isn't a thing anymore so definitely check out ground news for just great news source and uh yeah i'm gonna take a break from youtube every while so you won't see a video for maybe a little bit while but i'll be back soon and better than ever thank you guys for watching make sure you subscribe and thank you all for 100k once again see ya